So uh, welcome, this is Sean Roberts. I am Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me uh, uh, Mark Maxim. He is uh, the Director of Platform Services at Lacuna and also at Ellison Associates. Uh, welcome, Mark. We've been talking about the OMF and we've been talking about your thoughts about um, kind of the big tech and um, uh, consent decrees and antitrust, which is kind of a very heavy duty top-down approach of government. Um, but what we've been kind of uh, leading towards is um, uh, more, of, we live more in a software defined world today, obviously, where it comes to specifically areas like um, uh, app, uh, application programming interfaces, APIs, which a lot of people talk about, but they don't really understand very well. So uh, OMF, this nonprofit organization that was um, created to help manage the, uh, or administer it is probably the best word, the output of the collaboration between government, um, the city of Los Angeles specifically, um, and uh, Lacuna, your company. Um, and uh, there's some discussion right now in the policy space not well understood, I think, but there's some a few people that understand what APIs are about how we could um, co-opt an organization. Maybe co-op's not the right word, but work with an organization like the FCC, make it a little bit more like the SEC, give it some actual um, administrative oversight where it comes to um, how different organizations like Facebook and Google and others uh, function, but then work in. Um, the ability to communicate the, um, the uh, standards and regulatory policy requirements through APIs. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's a huge jump from what the OMF is doing with traffic control. Uh, but it sounds a lot better to me than um, the government coming down with antitrust and breaking up Facebook. Yeah. So what are, your, what are your thoughts as a developer on that? Well, I believe that governance via API is going to be one of the transformational technologies of the 21st century. Um, and that's a big statement. It's a bold statement, especially since it's really still in its infancy. Um, but what we've seen um, in these early days at the Open Mobility Foundation, specifically as it is reflected in the sort of chief product of the OMF, which is a, a specification for describing um, how vehicles move in the public right of way, um, this thing, the, the mobility data specification. Part of the mobility data specification is what's called digital policy, mm -hmm. the policy API. And it's not so much an API, like an API is right, you know, how do you know, programs talk to each other, you know, moving data back and forth. But the question is what's in that data? And the policy API says, here's how you describe the rules for scooters, and at the moment it's just scooters, but we're in the process of expanding that to taxis and buses and um, robot delivery vehicles and drones and all that stuff. <clears throat> How do you describe rules, not in English, not in a PDF that gets you know emailed to you know the various companies that are operating in the public right of way? How do you put that in a human readable, but also machine readable format such that you can measure the state of the system, in other words, how many vehicles are in this county or in this district or in this you know, city block or whatever? Um, and how can we express ideas in a machine readable fashion that say, you can't go here, oh, we'd really rather you have your vehicles dropped there or your maximum number of vehicles X, but you're also your minimum number of vehicles is Y in order to serve the population because if you don't have enough scooters then nobody will use them at certain times of day or whatever. Um, this idea of expressing the rules in a way that's human readable and machine readable that replaces the need for you know, hundreds potentially of you know, tra parking or traffic people out walking around writing tickets with pads. Like they can't tell you if there's 5,000 or 5,000 and 100 vehicles out on the streets. That's just not possible. Like, uh, so having a data exchange for like, okay, this is what it means to be on the street corner rentable. This is what it means to be on the block unrentable. This is what it means to be back in the warehouse. Now we can start talking about, well, if it is on the street, then it needs to meet these rules. If it's on the street, but not rentable, it needs to meet these rules. 
and so on and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to give build up like the idea in, in the mind oh, of good. people who are not familiar with this. Um, yep. <clears throat> this this digital governance, this ability to have file formats and data types and so on and so forth that companies, cities, counties, whatever, agree upon what it means, then you can start building tools to communicate, to analyze, to enforce, to regulate in a way that can be approximately instantaneous that allow for the ability of like dynamic road closures or dynamic pricing of curb, of uh, being able to close off parts of the airspace near the ground to like not send the drones right over the elementary school or, you know, what have you. Right. These are, you know, these are important ideas that, you know, for example, drones, FAA doesn't want to do this. FAA regulates, you know, the smallest thing they want to regulate is like a Cessna, you know, delivery drones, not that. So how do we expand what the OMF is doing in the scooter space, this collaboration between the cities that are interested in performing the regulation, the regulated entities, and then all of the software companies that might build tools to sort of you know, mitigate, manage, plan, visualize, analyze, et cetera, et cetera. Having a common language is really important. Is it very specific to scooters? Not at all. <laughs> there are many, many, many opportunities for describing um, interfaces that are agreed upon by multiple parties that can be published, that can be scrutinized. In the case of open source software, like anybody that wants to look for security leaks or strange behavior or whatever can dig their nose into it. Um, and the only way in my mind to minimize the risk is to put everything out where people can see it. That's not where you compete. You do not compete on proprietary standards on closed source, you compete on features, functionality, price, mass production, whatever. But the underlying how does it work has to be visible to as many people as possible. I bet my grandmother's not gonna, you know, read the code, but as long as you have a certain sort of critical mass of people scrutinizing things, then um, that's an opportunity to uh, do the work once in one jurisdiction or whatever and do it really well and just take it everything place else. So like the mobility data specification, you know, was largely developed in the Los Angeles basin at first. And I said the basin because it was LA collaborating with Santa Monica. There was a, some really excellent people at Santa Monica who contributed to it as well, but it really rapidly became a multi-person, multi-city, multi-continent uh, effort. MBS is now deployed in South America and Europe and, um, been working with uh, this lovely Norwegian gentleman lately to make yet another implementation of, of the software for it. Um, so the uh, adjacent uh, fields for this sort of standardization, I think are rampant. Uh, I mean, I can give a couple of really simple examples. My, a friend of mine was complaining the other day, it's like, oh, I wanna download my bank records from my three different banks. The file formats are all different. Why mm -hmm. is that? That's ridiculous. Why can't I get a, con a, a CSV file that I can use for everything? You know, um, I have a friend who works in the NTSB and he says that, you know, you'll see this sort of pattern of car accidents that doesn't seem to have any obvious connection except that, oh wait, these are all have Delco components or I'm sorry, I don't mean to slag Delco. It's not, it's not specific to Delco, but right. if there were, for example, a way for the car companies to publish in a consistent fashion the bill of materials for every single vehicle, then the moment you've got 10 or 20 car crashes, you can start to investigate what's the common element. Because right now, like you might have to end up with five or 600 dead people before it even merits getting looked at. You could totally address that problem by these common, you know, sort of bill of materials and look, use machine learning and so on and so forth to look for patterns. You know, and none of this is gonna like, you know, reduce the competitiveness of the car company. You know, having a standard for publishing the bill of materials is not, you know, gonna, you know, wreck their business model. It's not their core IP. Their IP is in the design and the support and the, you know, the advertising and all that, the branding, right? Like, so, I mean, I could go on and on and on about like all the adjacent opportunities for simple, straightforward standardization that would uh, make businesses run smoother, would make the interface to government dramatically less painful, that would increase competitive behavior, mm. um, things like that, so. This has been Lincoln Shorts. So.